Welcome back to Animation Teacher. In this session, we're going to talk about cutters and what I like to call sandwiching. It's basically creating an overlay and underlay and sandwiching it between two objects. So, uh, we're going to start here. Um, first, I'll show you the Franco rig again. And what I'll show you today is basically how, how to use a cutter for things like eyes. Um, I'm not sure, I might have one for, yeah, I have one for the eyebrow as well. Um, and I'm also going to show you something called sandwiching, which is essentially um, creating two layers. You got an overlay and an underlay layer, and you're going to sandwich it between an object, creating a nice little mask. Okay, so I am just going to deactivate that main rig and I'll activate um, basically the arm and the eyes here. Uh, let's start with masking. Okay, so let me just first put on a color card so, so we can see that the eye white is actually white. Let's do, uh, let's do a dark purple color card. Oh, I already have one. There we go. So here is the eye white. And we have a pupil. And we have an eyebrow as well. Okay, so this is what we need. I'm going to just build um, another one next to it so you can see what's going on. But first, let me uh, show you what's happening first. We have an eyelid which if you go under the drawing, you'll see that it's separated in two layers here. The line art layer, which is just the eye itself. And we also have the color art eye white fill. Now, I've used a cutter to cut the pupil using the eye white fill. And I've sandwiched it between the two the overlay eyelid and the eye white, which is, which goes underneath here. Okay, so I'll show you how that works. Um, also, I've incorporated a eyebrow cutter with a color override cutter as well. It's not as important, but I'll show you how to create that as well. <coughs> okay, so I'm just going to copy the three pieces that I have here, copy paste, and we'll just create it over here. Control H for a composite, and I'm just going to attach these three items to my composite. Okay, and I'll just deactivate this, and we'll try to build it from scratch. So. Here is my eye, without any pegs, obviously. So I'm going to hide my eyebrow for now, and we'll just do the eye, pupil, and eyelid. So the pupil itself, the art of the pupil, is just a pupil in the line art. Seems to be a speck there I don't need. Okay, so this is just a pupil. It doesn't occupy any other layers except for the line art. So that keeps things pretty clean and easy. As for the eyelid, I've separated it to the line art and the underlay art. So I'll have to use only the underlay art to cut my pupil. So what I'll do is I'm going to copy, control C, paste, control V. And this here, I'm only going to reveal the color art layer here. And for clarity's sake, I'm just going to put uh, um, C color. Okay, so I'm using the color layer, and I'm going to take my cutter from my node library, and I'm going to cut my pupil. So, as I mentioned before, to cut something, you have to put it into the right side of the cutter node. 
and what you want to use to cut width goes on the other side. Now I'm just going to hide uh, the eyelids here and I'm going to cut it. Let's set this to pass through. Interesting. Okay. So here is my pupil and I've cut it with my eyelid. Let's give it a peg here. So basically, because I use my eyelid color, uh, which is the eye white, it'll actually cut um, wherever my eye white is. Okay, so here in my drawing of my eye white, oh, it's actually on the underlay. Sorry, let's activate the underlay layer. There it is, underlay layer. So now my pupil, if I move it, will cut within my eye white. But as you can obviously see, this is inverted. So simply go to your cutter tool and hit inverted. Now it stays within the eye white. Okay. Now there's no point of having an eye white if you can't see it. So we'll actually have to activate the eye white and we're going to place it underneath. And for this layer, we can actually show everything. Now, you can see that the eye white is actually not cutting this pupil perfectly. And it's simply because the eye white itself and the eyelid itself has a adjusted line art. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to go into the eyelid art itself and, uh, and make sure that the white doesn't ride up to this line here. To do that, all you have to do is actually find the eye white color, fill this, you're going to copy this, Go under the underlay layer, paste it, and then under tool properties, what you want to do is convert pencil to brush and then flatten your image. Now, before I flatten it, I want to show you something. Do you see where this line, this orange line is between the black? That is where the fill currently resides, and that's how far the mask will. Um, basically cut the pupil. So if we flatten it, now the line goes to here, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to ditch the lid outline there and keep the eye white. And I have to remember to lose this eye white here as well. So now when you look at the image, it cuts right to the eye white mask line. So that's how you create a mask. Now we have this eyebrow. Now this eyebrow has a cutter in the color art layer here, which I actually think I'm going to expand a little bit here. Let's ex expand it nice and wide just because uh, I want to cut the whole eye. Now you can adjust this whenever to however you want, but for now I'll just leave it like that. And I'm going to go to the camera view here. In the camera view, I'm going to copy and paste the eyebrow. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can use a color override to cut um, this pupil or this whole eyelid comp. Or you can do what we just did and assign your eyebrow a specific layer to use to cut uh, the eye composite. So I'm, I, I just want to go back here for a second. So under this setup here, these color overrides basically uh, how this works is uh, if you go to render select colors only, it's only going to use what you've designated it um, here to cut. With. So in this case here, 
we have the torso cutter green, and we're using that color to cut the eye composite here. So I'll show you how to do that, and then I'll show you another way to cut. So we have our node library. I'm going to grab the color override, and I'll grab a cutter. Now there is no one way of doing a specific thing. So uh, I'll show you uh, this one way and I'll show you another way. So basically right now I have two colors in this eyebrow. I have this color which is the torso cutter and I have this uh, color here which I believe is a hair cutter or something like that. Um, what color is that? I think it's called hair hair tone hair tone 2 so I'm going to use the torso cutter color here and I'm going to cut this eye composite so to cut the eye composite I actually need to create another composite so Control H to create a new composite, and I'm going to run this composite into here. Now, feel free to set this to pass through or bitmap. In this case, it doesn't really matter. So, this composite now is the I composite. I'll just rename this I composite, which includes the I and the pupil. And we're going to cut that using our eyebrow. But we're only going to use, give it a peg here, we're only going to use a, a specific color of the eyebrow. So right now, if I was to cut this, let me hide this one. If I was to cut this, it'll just do that. But what I want to do is I actually want to use, uh, first off, I want to show the eyebrow still. So I'm going to... Uh, copy and paste the eyebrow and just reveal the line art and I'll put that in front of everything so this way it'll just cut everything like that now that I look at it I don't think we even need the color override but basically the color override works like this if I slide in the color override, I can assign specific colors to use to cut. So for example, if I go to render selected colors only, I click on the torso cutter, I can assign this color to use and cut. So if I even hide this, notice that it's only using this green to cut with. If I remove this cutter, you'll see a bit of the eyebrow. Okay, and that's the green part. So in this particular setup, I actually don't need it. This works just fine. Okay, so just to recap, to use a cutter, you grab it from the node view here. Um, where is it? Here. Anything you put on the right hand side is the object being cut. Anything you put on the left hand side is what you use to cut the object with. Alright, we're moving on to sandwiching. Okay, so to sandwich. Now, the arm, the arm, the hand, and the bicep are both separated into two distinct um, categories here, or two distinct, distinct drawing layers. For the hand, I have 
the full hand, and then I have a hand cut off like this. For the forearm, I have the full forearm here, and the forearm cut off like this. For the bicep, where is the bicep? Ah, here it is, I put it on a different layer. So for the bicep, I have the full bicep and a part of the bicep cut off. Okay, so this is basically how you build it. I'm going to take one of each here and let's build this again. Control Shift P to create new pegs and Control H to create a composite. Just going to connect my composites. I'll set it to bitmap or pass through. And let's see here. to reveal all these layers because I have no idea where anything is right now. Okay, oh, this is a second forearm. I just need the one, but I do need my bicep. Now I'll grab one of these biceps. There you go. A to activate. Let's connect this. There we go. Okay, so this is probably what you have. Now, it's important first off to make sure that your connection points form a perfect circle so that your rotations can actually work uh, quite nicely here. See how it's almost a perfect circle on the top, the bottom? So what we want is to separate the art in both of these. So I'm going to do that for you right now. I'm just going to delete the overlay. And what you have is uh, you have the full artwork. What you want to do is separate an overlay and an underlay layer. Uh, it doesn't matter which actual layer you place it in um, so that you can have it separated. So on the overlay part of it, what you're going to do is highlight everything, convert pencil to brush, and then flatten. Oops, sorry. If you have something like that, you have to deselect first, and then flatten, just to make sure your layering works. Now, what you need to do next is you have to uh, create a break in your art. So in this case, once it's flattened, you can use the contour editor tool here and you can just pull in your lines and then use your black arrow tool and delete so you have a nice clean uh, section here. You can do the same for the bottom here but um, we're actually going to utilize the forearm to do this but um, I guess it doesn't really matter I can show you anyway. Okay, and Just delete like that. Again if you hold control you can create a new point and erase away. Okay, so now you have like an overlay and an underlay. Um, you're going to do the same thing with the forearm. You can go into the forearm. Now in this case, I put it on the color art layer and the line art layer. Still, it's an overlay underlay. So I'm going to copy this with the black selection tool. Then I'm going to paste it into um, overlay uh, layer. In this case, it's the line art. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to convert pencil to brush and then flatten and then I'll go in with my arrow my white uh, arrow contour editor tool and just slide the points like so I'll do it for the top and the bottom all right so now I have my whoops my color my underlay and my overlay uh, this was a reference circle, I don't need that. 
my hand, we do the exact same thing. So where did I put it? There it is. So I put it in my line art layer as well. So I'm going to copy this using my selection tool, paste. Once again, under my tool properties, convert pencil to brush, then flatten. I'll take my contour editor and just, uh, oh, it didn't work there. Flatten, there you go. So when you flatten it, here, I'll undo that. You want to make sure that center orange line is gone. So when you flatten it, it's gone. And then you use your contour editor. Oops. You can hit a new control point and slide it in. Okay, so that's all you need. Now, when you go to the camera view, this is what you do. <coughs> you have to sandwich these. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to copy and paste the hand, put it underneath, and then give it, give it the exact same peg here. Okay, you can actually give it a secondary peg. I tend to like to give my uh, underlays an extra peg, just in case in the future you want to change the Z depth. On the overlay art layer, we're only going to reveal the line art. And as you can see, changes have already been made here. It's been fixed. But I don't quite like the way this is showing. It's showing too much. Um, art here so I'm actually going to adjust it on the fly like that you can adjust this to as much to your heart's content as you'd like okay so now it's a cleaner line there <clears throat> now we take our forearm and we're going to sandwich the forearm with the bicep. So I'm going to copy and paste and we'll put the forearm underneath. We'll give it its own peg, but we're going to parent it with the main peg here. Now on the main peg or on the overlay, I'm going to go in again to my forearm and just reveal the line art layer, as you can see there. Now again, if you want to fix it, simply make sure you're on the line art layer and you can actually adjust it in the camera view. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to adjust it like so. So now, um, I'll show you what it looks like. Let me just fix the pivot on some of these first. Again, to adjust the pivot, all you do is use the translate tool or the rotational tool. Select your forearm or whatever it is that you're selecting. So in this case, it's the forearm, um, bicep, and hit the transform tool to set it. All right, so I'm going to parent this now. So the hand is parented to the forearm, and the bicep controls the forearm, like so. So here's my rotation. I have to fix the pivot point. But now you can see that there's an overlay and an underlay. And it's sandwiching between the bicep art here. And we have the same deal with the hand. We have an overlay and an underlay. And it's sandwiching between the forearm here. And that's pretty much it. Cutters with the eyes and sandwiching.
and there's Franco. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.